And so Edward Tulane was mended, put together again, cleaned and polished, dressed in an elegant suit and placed on a high shelf for display. From this shelf, Edward could see the whole shop, Lucius Clark's workbench and the windows to the outside world and the door that the customers used to enter and leave. From this shelf, Edward saw Bryce open the door one day and stand in the threshold, the silver harmonica in his left hand flashing brilliantly in the sunlight flooding in through the windows. Young sir, said Lucius, I'm afraid that we made a deal. Can't I see him? asked Bryce. He wiped his hand across his nose and the gesture filled Edward with a terrible feeling of love and loss. I just want to look at him. Lucius Clark sighed. You may look, he said. You may look and then you must go and not come back. I cannot have you come in my shop every day mooning over what you have lost. Yes, sir, said Bryce. Lucius sighed again. <sighs> he got up from his workbench and went to Edward's shelf and picked him up and held him so that Bryce could see him. Hey, Jangles, said Bryce. You look good. The last time I, I seen you, you looked terrible. Your head was busted in and he is put together again, said Lucius. As I promised you, he would be. Bryce nodded. He wiped his hand across his nose. Can I hold him? He asked. No, said Lucius. Bryce nodded again. Tell him goodbye, said Lucius Clark. He is repaired. He has been saved. Now you must tell him goodbye. Goodbye, said Bryce. Don't go, thought Edward. I won't be able to bear it if you go. And now you must leave, said Lucius Clark. Yes, sir, said Bryce. But he stood without moving, looking at Edward. Go, said Lucius Clark. Go. Please, thought Edward, don't. Bryce turned. He walked through the door of the doll mender shop. The door closed. The bell tinkled. And Edward was alone. Chapter 25. Technically, of course, he was not alone. Lucius Clark's shop was filled with dolls. Lady dolls, baby dolls, dolls with eyes that opened and closed, and dolls with painted on eyes, doll, dolls dressed as queens, and dolls wearing sailor suits. Edward had never cared for dolls. He found them annoying and self-centered, twittery, and vain. This opinion was immediately reinforced by his first shelf mate, a china doll with green glass eyes and red lips and dark brown hair. She was wearing a green satin dress that fell to her knees. What are you? She said in a high pitched voice when Edward was placed on the shelf next to her. I am a rabbit, said Edward. The doll let out a small squeak. <laughs> You're in the wrong place, she said. This is a shop for dolls, not rabbits. Edward said nothing. Shoo, she said the doll. I would love to shoo, said Edward, but it is obvious that I cannot. After a long silence, the doll said, I hope you don't think that anyone is going to buy you. Again, Edward said nothing. The people who come here want dolls, not rabbits. They want baby dolls or elegant dolls such as myself. Dolls with pretty dresses, dolls with eyes that open and close. I have no interest in being purchased, said Edward. The doll gasped. Oh! You don't want somebody to buy you, she said. You don't want to be owned by a little girl who loves you. Sarah Ruth. Abilene, their names went through Edward's head like the notes of a sad, sweet song. I have already been loved, said Edward. I have been loved by a girl named Abilene. I have been loved by a fisherman and his wife and a hobo and his dog. I have been loved by a boy who played a, the harmonica 
and by a girl who died. Don't talk to me about love, he said. I have known love. This impassioned speech shut up Edward's shelfmate for a considerable amount of time. Well, she said at last, still. My point is that no one is going to want to buy you. They did not speak to each other again. The doll was sold two weeks later to a grandmother who was purchasing for her grandchild. Yes, she said to Lucius Clark. That one right there, the one with the green dress. She is quite lovely. Yes, said Lucius. She is, isn't she? And he plucked the doll from the shelf. Goodbye and good riddance, thought Edward. The spot next to the rabbit stayed vacant for some time. Day after day, the door to the shop opened and closed, letting in early morning sun or late afternoon light, lifting the hearts of the dolls inside. All of them thinking when the door swung wide that this time, this time, the person entering the shop would be the one who was wanting them. Edward was the lone contrarian. He prided himself on not hoping, on not allowing his heart to lift inside him. He prided himself on keeping his heart silent, immobile, closed tight. I am done with hope, thought Edward Tulane. And then one day at dusk, right before he closed the shop, Lucius Clark placed another doll on the shelf next to Edward. <laughs>